Greetings, YouTube. It's the Panther, and this is a YouTube channel. Yeah, I know. It's kind of hard to believe, but this is indeed a channel on YouTube. And when you operate a channel on YouTube, there are certain obligations that need to be met. Be articulate. Have a nice thumbnail. Promote honestly. Don't take your dick out, except on Thursdays. And of course, top 10 lists. No! So here I am, joining the movement, plunging into the unholy depths of top 10 lists that oh so many have plunged before. I mean, top 10 lists are like the Paris Hilton of the YouTube world. Everyone's done it and nobody leaves satisfied. You can do it basically to say you've done it, but in the end, there is a certain stench that will never wash away. You wind up with people telling you that that game on your list sucks, or you wind up with people telling you that you missed a game because how dare you not have this game that I like on your own personal list. And at least 6 STDs. But here I am with a list of games in one hand and a box of condoms in the other, so I'm ready. My only rule for this list, one game per franchise. But with that in mind, let's take a look at my top 10 favorite games of all time. Number 10. Far Cry 3. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity. In 2013, Far Cry 3 taught me to love again. i have been gaming for years and with a strange feeling of emptiness. I suppose I never directly noticed I was feeling this way, but Far Cry 3 made me see the emptiness inside me, thankfully before the Church of Scientology had a chance to. What I was missing was a fantastic, open-world, single-player, first-person shooter. In a world where AAA publishers try to tell you that all you really want is Call of Duty and Candy Crush, Far Cry 3 told the world that you don't necessarily need multiplayer. DLC, although Blood Dragon is awesome, or even Chocolate Sprinkle Balls to make a great game. All you need is a beautiful world, awesome gameplay, a badass villain, and the best damn mission in video game history. That doesn't seem like too much to ask, right? Number 9. Rocket League. I was terrified of putting this newer game on my top 10 list, especially one this popular. Oh John, you just want to strike while the iron's hot. You're just putting this on because it's popular. This is just another one of those YouTube fodder games, John. Fuck you, John. Fuck you. Well, let me tell you something about YouTube fodder, my imaginary friend that will henceforth be named Douchebagicus. You will not see Five Nights at Freddy's on this list. You will not see Goat, Surgeon, Farming, whatever the fuck else simulator on this list. But you damn sure will see Rocket League on this list. It was the late Satoru Iwata who said, Video games are meant to be just one thing. Fun fun for everyone. And while people spend their lives hating on Destiny for its lack of story or slowly trudging through The Last of Us because oh my god Joel and Ellie, I cannot agree more with Mr. Iwata's sentiment. I am in no way saying that there's no room for storytelling in video games, but first and foremost, I want my games to be fun. And Rocket League is the most fun I've had playing a game in a long, long time. Honestly, at this point, I don't care if Sony decides to get out of the console business and starts making Uncharted slot machines and the new mobile extravaganza Crash Bandicoot Clicker 3 extra clips for $9.99, fuck Konami. I now know that I can always go back to my PS4 anyway, because I have Rocket League, and that's all I need. Please understand. Number 8. Oh boy. MVP Baseball 2005. A fucking sports game, this is, let's fucking suck! I know. I know. A lot of people were quick to dismiss sports games, baseball ones especially, but as a fan of sports games, this one was fucking perfection, except for the Red Sox on the cover. A deep roster, impressive graphics, a great character creator, the ability to aim your hits with ease, a meter for pitching and fielding, and an owner mode where you can manage your payroll, set your prices, and even build your own stadium. Oh, I just came. Number 7. The Elder Scrolls V. Skyrim. An obvious choice, really. I'm a Bethesda fanboy through and through, and the reason is simple. My favorite type of games are the ones that let you create your own character, and then drop you in an open world and let you create your own story instead of beating you over the head with theirs. And Bethesda has this down to a fucking science, and Skyrim is the best of the bunch. Sure, it has its imperfections. It was very buggy at launch especially. Some of the quest lines were not quite as fun or as interesting as their prior game counterparts. Too many damn immortal NPCs, let me kill children, damn it. And a lot of people didn't enjoy the quote dumbing down of many core mechanics, but a beautifully realized open world, much more refined combat, and as always, kick-ass soundtrack, and much, much more, make this the best game that Bethesda has ever developed to this point. But not necessarily the best game they ever produced. Foreshadowing. Number 6. Grand Theft Auto 5. 
I'm sure you guys never heard of this underground indie gem, so I'll be really thorough as to why this game's fantastic. Instead of one awesome protagonist, we have three. Big open world with plenty to do, really fun story, plenty of customization, despite its imperfections, my favorite online mode in any game ever. Next! Number 5, South Park Stick of Truth. Remember the story of King Midas? The god in Greek mythology whom everything he touched turned to gold? Well, multiply him by two and remove the silly negative consequences and morals about being consumed by greed. Add a twinge of homosexuality and a few fart jokes and you would have Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Masters of everything they seemingly casually throw their hats into. Hey Matt, let's make an animated show following the lives of school children, but let's make it look like shit and make it only for adults. Cool, let's do it. Best animated show of all time. Hey Matt, let's make a movie about puppets, but they're in the military and they destroy all the world's important landmarks fighting terrorism. Sure, why not? Fuck yeah! Hey Matt, let's make a Broadway musical. Okay. Hasadiga Ibawai. If I haven't made it clear that I'm a huge Stone and Parker fan, oh golly gee, I'm sorry Mr. Idiot, might I interest you in that piece of candy on the floor under that huge rock? When Stone and Parker announced they were going to work on their own South Park game, I was justifiably pumped. And through delay after delay after delay, my heart never wavered. And at the end of the day, South Park The Stick of Truth was everything I could have hoped it would be. And more. I'm totally serial. Get a load of this one. Number 4. The Godfather, The Game. Probably the biggest surprise of this list, The Godfather Game is almost an anomaly. A movie licensed game based on a narrative driven 1972 film that was in turn based on a 1969 book. So a book was adapted into a movie, which is usually a failure, and instead it was one of the greatest films of all time. And then over 30 years later that film was turned into a video game which is almost always a failure, and the result is my all time favorite third person shooter. Everything about the Godfather game should have been a failure. Instead, every bit of it was perfection. Make your own character, and through ingenious storytelling, make him part of the Godfather saga. Who delivered the murder weapon to Michael? You did. Who carried out the murders of the rival Dons? You did. How did Michael escape to Sicily? You got him there. How did Don Corleone survive the attempt in his life? You protected him. This is all the while having a surprisingly deep amount of customization and a GTA style open world, except with better visuals and better gunplay and loads of fun things to do. Want to merely experience the story? Go right ahead. Want to instead crush your rivals by taking over their businesses and bombing their compounds? Sign me the fuck up. The Godfather game is one of my favorite games of all time, and based on one of my favorite films of all time. Number 3. Assassin's Creed 2 I think to me, Assassin's Creed 2 is so striking because it serves as a beacon of how to do a sequel right. Take the few cool ideas from the original, namely the idea of going back in time for memories, semi-accurate historical storytelling, parkour-based open-world gameplay, and a hooded badass with retractable wrist blades, and get rid of everything else in favor of beautiful and vibrant settings, varied mission structure, improved combat, and an endlessly likable protagonist and story. Assassin's Creed 2 put the Assassin's Creed series on the map for me as one that will remain a favorite of mine for years to come. I also just realized that this is the third Ubisoft produced game I put on this list. I'm part of the problem. Number 2. Super Mario 64! The game that made me love games. Before Super Mario 64, I liked games. I played my Sanics, I even played my Marios, but that's all I did, I played them. Mario 64, on the other hand, taught me that games could be something more than something you just play. They could be something you experienced. And the reason for this was one thing, freedom. No longer were games just World 1-1, one, one, then 1-2, one, 1-3, one, and onward until you won. You can do whatever you want, do whatever mission you want, explore a beautifully realized hub world and unlock its secrets, or just go swimming and tree climbing in the courtyard. The choice is entirely yours. This simple quality changed video games for me forever, and this aspect of freedom is something that is obviously common with most of my favorite games looking at this list. The fact that this game is 20 years old and still holds up enough to be number two against the modern games that populate the rest of my list is even more impressive. Mario 64 is timeless and will always be special in my heart. Warn the villagers, prepare your pitchforks, because number one is Fallout New Vegas. Per fucking fection. I have defended this game for five years and I will continue to defend it until I die a happy little man. Take the terrific groundwork laid by Fallout 3, improve some mechanics, make it more difficult, create an appealing Rat Pack style theme complete with a fully alive city and the freedom. Oh dear sweet newborn infant Jesus, the freedom. 
Travel the world and meet new factions. Side with any you want. Do missions for some and have them join your cause or just kill everyone and everything. Explore anything from insect-filled sandstorms to a peaceful mutant faction sheltered in a snowy ski lodge. Fallout New Vegas both blends the modern style of Fallout 3 while perfectly recapturing the spirit of the old Fallouts. Varied areas, fully alive regions, and an overall silliness that lets you know this game isn't taking itself too seriously. Fallout New Vegas is everything I want in a video game. Does it get any better? Well, how about the best DLC of all time? Now it's holding up an array of fully erect hand penises. If it tries to insert them, activate vivisectors. We can argue forever about which of the last two Fallout games is the superior. They're both fantastic, and I know that most of you think that I'm on the wrong side of that argument. But this is my list of favorite games. And Fallout New Vegas is without a doubt number one on my list. So there you have it guys, my top 10 favorite games of all time. Did you agree with my list? Bah, who are we kidding? Let me know how badly you disagree with me in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why don't you post your top 10 favorite games of all time? And give me a little explanation why for each one. I want to read it, I want to know your opinion. So, put that opinion down in the comment section below, and I will see you when I see you. Bye bye.